How will Biden change the 2020 race? CNN's Arlette Sines is live in Biden's hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, with the breaking details. Arlette. Hey, Allison, Joe Biden just released that video announcing his 2020 bid on his social media accounts. He is framing his campaign as a battle for the soul of a country, a message that he's really carried over the past year. Take a listen and a look at what he had to say as he officially announced his candidacy for president. Charlottesville, Virginia is home to the author of one of the great documents in human history. We know it by heart. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. We've heard it so often, it's almost a cliche, but it's who we are. We haven't always lived up to these ideals. Jefferson himself didn't, but we have never before walked away from them. Charlottesville is also home to a defining moment for this nation in the last few years. It was there on August of 2017 we saw Klansmen and white supremacists and neo-Nazis come out in the open. Their crazed faces, illuminated by torches, veins bulging and burying the fangs of racism, chanting the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. And they were met by a courageous group of Americans and a violent clash ensued. And a brave young woman lost her life. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. He said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides? With those words, the President of the United States assigned a moral equivalence between those spreading hate and those of the courage to stand against it. And in that moment, I knew the threat to this nation was unlike any I had ever seen in my lifetime. I wrote at the time that we're in the battle for the soul of this nation. Oh, well, that's even more true today. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time. But if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever and fundamentally alter the character of this nation, who we are, and I cannot stand by and watch that happen. The core values of this nation are standing in the world, our very democracy. Everything that has made America, America is at stake. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Folks, America's an idea. An idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees that everyone is treated with dignity and gives hate no safe harbor. It instills in every person in this country the belief that no matter where you start in life, there's nothing you can achieve if you work at it. That's what we believe. And above all else, that's what's at stake in this election. We can't forget what happened in Charlottesville. Even more important, we have to remember who we are. This is America. So you heard Joe Biden there speaking directly, that's saying that this is a battle for the soul of the country and drawing on those clashes in Charlottesville and specifically President Trump's response to them. He wants to frame this campaign as a campaign between him and President Trump saying that he needs to defend the character of this country. Now, later today, we're going to see Joe Biden up in Philadelphia at a fundraiser, a private fundraiser that will be attended by many in the Pennsylvania delegation, including Senator Bob Casey. This is showing that he wants to have a strong showing right out of the gate, especially with those fundraising figures, as he's now officially a candidate for president. Allison. All right, Arlette Sines, stick around with us right now. I want to bring in Alex Burns, New York Times political correspondent, whose story on Joe Biden posted honestly seconds ago as you he was sitting so here. You were so excited when you got the alert. Well, what is happening? How did Alex do that? I have never had a news alert post with someone sitting next to me it's by the office. an exciting moment here on the set. David Gregory, CNN senior political analyst here with us as well. Alex Burns, that announcement video was very 
interesting. And I don't think it was what I expected. I knew that Joe Biden was going to come out saying that he believes we're in a battle for the soul of the country. But he leaned into Charlottesville. Charlottesville was the common thread throughout that three minute video. No, going well beyond the kind of language that we have heard from him in his recent public appearances, where he has talked about, you know, restoring American values of, of different kinds. But the notion that he is uh, saying that he sees the same forces on the march in this country that were on the march in Europe in the 1930s is really, really stark. And it does convey in public what we know he has told people in private, which is that he sees this election as a national emergency. And he sees that as the rationale for his candidacy, that uh, if there's one person who is capable clearly of uh, defeating President Trump and capable of doing the job, that he's that guy. Here's the website that we just get, they've just unveiled for his candidacy. Our best days still lie ahead. Couldn't he say are ahead? Well, whatever, I'm not gonna quibble on this morning. Uh, David Gregory, what did you think? I mean, look, obviously so many of the candidates are debating whether or not they ignore President Trump, mention him by name. Joe Biden has decided to go right to the heart of the matter and right. frame this as the contrast against President Trump. Well, that's right. And to make the argument as bluntly and as powerfully as he can that this is an election about who America is and who Donald Trump is, not the economy, not the stock market, not the country being at peace. All of those are strengths for President Trump. But who Trump is, we know from 2018 in the congressional election that Republicans are hurting, that this question of Trump's uh, negatives, uh, mostly personal, how he's leading the country, the sense that people have about America today are all negatives for Trump, and that's where Biden is going. And you talk about campaigning in poetry and governing in prose. This was a lot of poetry uh, coming from Biden this morning. And I, yes, I think it's very interesting that he uh, drilled down on Charlottesville to say this is a moment that says everything you need to know about Donald Trump. Um, and now we can look and assess strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. of Biden, but he's going to get some attention with this. And we have a chance over these three hours to really dig into that. Let's start, Arlette, and you're covering the now official Biden campaign. What is it that Biden and his supporters think he uniquely brings to the table? What does Joe Biden have that they are proposing makes him the most likely candidate to defeat Donald Trump? Well, I think the number one thing that everyone points to is the experience factor. Uh, his supporters say that there is no better training to be president than to be vice president, that Joe Biden was in the room for all of those major decisions with President Obama and also his career, 36-year career spanning in the Senate, eight years as vice president. He's been uh, on the foreign stage with world leaders. He has personal relationships with these people. And they really feel that he can uh, restore some sense of order that they think uh, was around during the Obama administration. But in that video, you really heard very personal terms from Joe Biden about why he felt the need to enter this race, trying to bring back and trying to restore and maintain the character, he says, of the country. Uh, Biden has made it very clear that he is ready to take on Donald Trump directly. You've seen him in recent speeches uh, going after him when it comes to the tax cuts or, or his treatment of working class voters. And this is something we expect him to continue through in the coming uh, months of this campaign. Alex, in your article, you say that there are, though, big concerns about Biden running a competent campaign. Why? Why would, I mean, he has so much experience. Why wouldn't he run a competent campaign? Well, in some respects, it's because past performance is a pretty decent predictor of future results. He's run for president uh, twice before, both times has, has sort of barely made a dent uh, in the race in 1988 uh, and in 2008. Uh, he has never run a major campaign where he is the front runner uh, from the start, right? He was Barack Obama's running mate twice, but that's a supporting role. So now he's the starring actor uh, in this campaign. And if you look over the last couple months, you know, Joe Biden's strengths have been really consistent all through his deliberation process, and they're what Arlette described. You know, the other side of it is the indecision. He pushed back his deadline for entering the race several times. The leaks from his operation that, you know, the ideas were sort of floated and discarded, like should Stacey Abrams, uh, should they ask Stacey Abrams to be the vice president uh, uh, up front? Just in the last couple of days, there was indecision about, you know, what announcement video was actually going to be uh, posted. Joe Biden's not a guy who is known for running a really tight and disciplined ship. And he's not been in this particular media and political environment out there on his own before, right? So I yeah. think we're going to learn mm -hmm. pretty fast in the next week or two 
just how disciplined he can be.